CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. The Wall Street rally continues after the Fed's dovish policy. Dow Jones hits a fresh record high as indices start for a seventh straight week of gains, the best run since 2019. European stocks close largely higher as the European Central Bank holds interest rates steady for the second meeting in a row. Even as it revises growth forecasts lower, the Bank of England too leaves rates unchanged but says that monetary policy is likely to remain restrictive for an extended period of time. Asian markets open largely higher ahead of the key Chinese economic data as Wall Street continues to surge. The gift nifty is also indicating a higher start for the Indian market. Crude prices surge about 3%. Brent hit $76 a barrel mark. The dollar weakens and the dovish Fed improves the outlook. Gold too surges to a 10-day high as the Fed hints at lower rates next year. Hero Moto appoints ex-DLF CFO Vivek Anand as its chief financial officer. The company has also raised its stake in EV startup Aether Energy by about 3% to 39.7% in likely blocked today as well. Sources say Plenty Private Group and multiple, Multiples Private will sell 2.33% stake in a clean-out trade in PVR, while General Atlantic could sell up to 10% stake in KFIN Technologies. Good morning in the Mumbai News Centre. I'm Sonal Bhutra. You're watching Power Breakfast. Those are the top headlines, but let's quickly take a look at what the global markets, and especially Asian markets right now, are doing. We had a strong handover coming in from the Wall Street, and that is something which is reflecting in the Asian markets as well. So just take a look. Taiwanese index is up around three tenths of a percent. There's a big surge in the Hang Seng, two percent higher on that one. And actually, most of them are in the green, barring Straits Times, which is down around two tenths of a percent. Yesterday, Nikkei was underperforming, but today it's up around one point two percent. So there. There is some buying which has come back in the Japanese market. There's a slew of macro data which is expected in the Chinese markets as well. So we'll keep a track of that. But for now, let's take a look at the gift nifty because that one is indicating that the start for our own markets, well, that could be another strong day for our own markets. 100 point uptick. Uh, that's an implied open that the gift nifty is suggesting right now. And in the US markets, Wall Street closed higher. Dow continued its rally by gaining over 100 points after notching its best ever close yesterday. While the S&P 500 and Nasdaq ended just above the flat line, the 10-year Treasury yield dropped below 4% for the first time since August as investors mounted bets on rate cuts for 2024. CNBC's Bertha Coombs gets us a wrap of all the action on Wall Street. Major averages extending gains one day after the Fed kept rates unchanged and signaled that they might cut rates next week. We got strong retail spending data, really raising hopes of a so-called soft landing for the economy. The Dow up 158 points, the S&P 500 adding 12, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq gained 28. Retail sales saw an unexpected upturn in November, according to the Commerce Department, rising three-tenths of a percent, a strong rebound from the two-tenths of a percent decline in October, and higher than the Dow Jones estimates. Sales were strongest when it came to spending at restaurants, specialty stores, and online. Only a few categories actually saw a decline, including electronics and appliances. Meantime, another big bump in the road for General Motors Cruise Unit. It. It's cutting nearly a quarter of employees. The RoboTaxi subsidiary announcing internally that it will lay off 900 workers, primarily in the commercial operations and corporate function space. The latest shakeup comes one day after Cruz dismissed nine key leaders for the company's response to an October 2nd crash where a Cruz self-driving car dragged a pedestrian for 20 feet. That's the situation here in New York on Wall Street. Back over to you in Mumbai. Okay, all right. A strong day again for the Wall Street after that rate cut, possible rate cut idea came in from the Fed. But let's listen into some important opinion coming in from market experts on the Fed decision and the U.S. market outlook. I would say, um, you know, that they themselves are clearly feeling much more comfortable. You know, three weeks ago, Powell was saying it's too early to even talk about uh, rate cuts, and here we are three weeks later, and he admitted that, you know, rate cut discussion was at the table. I think he said something in that phrase. You know, once they come out of the so-called blackout period, we'll start to hear from them and we'll observe, are they attempting to more aggressively push back, uh, which they did, which Powell did not do yesterday. 
Um, so I think what's really interesting is now the entire dynamic is not whether or not there will be cuts, it's how early. As inflation comes down, the real Fed funds rate uh, actually goes up unless you begin to cut rates. So the, the FOMC was going to have to start discussing the conditions for cutting rates. What I mean by that, if the nominal Fed funds rate is five and a quarter, and let's say inflation, depending on your measures, running at three and a half, means you have a real Fed funds rate at one and three quarters. If inflation continues to go down, they don't want the real rate right. to go up. They want it either to stay the same or even go down. And so they've got room to start considering cuts if they see sustained improvement. What we heard from Fed Chair Powell was that it's not about the economy, it's not about financial conditions, it's not about the jobs market, it's about inflation. And inflation have been coming down pretty far and fast. And if we're at a point where inflation is 2.7 percent by March, the consensus is expecting, and interest rates are still at 5.5 percent, that's a big gap that the Fed can do something about, meaning cutting rates. You know, what we've been doing for the last two years has been thinking, you know, rates are high, who's going to get hurt by this, and what companies are disadvantaged? But we're going to have to do the opposite of that and say, who's actually going to be in a good position now that rates may be coming down? Okay, that is the U.S. market outlook coming in from experts. It's time to get to the final update in our global market wrap now. European markets ended Thursday's trading session mixed, trimming a lot of the early gains. The French CAC up about 45 points, the German DAX losing 13, while the British FTSE hits a 12-week high, surging 1.5%. The pan-European stock 600 closed 0.9% higher to an over 22-month high after rising as much as 1.7% earlier in the day. To some central bank action now, the European Central Bank left interest rates unchanged at record highs but pushed back on bets on imminent rate cuts. The ECB also cut its 2024 inflation and GDP forecasts. Let's listen in to what ECB President Christine Lagarde had to say on the rate trajectory going forward. Should we lower our guard? We ask ourselves that question. No, we should absolutely not lower our guard. We did not, we did not discuss rate cuts at all. No discussion, no debate on this issue. We believe that there is still work to be done and that can very much take the form of holding OK, let's move on. The Bank of England also left its, uh, left its main interest rate unchanged at 5.25% and said policies likely to need to be more restrictive for an extended period of time. The BOE also added that key indicators of inflation in the UK remain particularly elevated. In an address to the media following the decision, BOE Governor Andrew Bailey said that while he's very encouraged by the progress that they have seen in inflation, but it is too early to start speculating about cutting rates. So quite a different opinion coming in from what the U.S. Fed said yesterday. So that's what's happening in the European region. But we'll do one thing. We'll sip into a short break. When we come back, we'll tell you how all these global cues impact our own markets in our Power Prep segment. So stay tuned for that. CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. Well, there has been a lot of central bank action in the last two days, and that's the impact we're seeing on global markets as well. But now we have a research team joining to tell you what the trade setup in India is looking like, the stocks that are likely to be in the news, and the action from the FNO space as well. Hey, guys, a very good morning to all of you, and happy Friday. Ekta, let me come across to you. Will the party continue this Friday? Well, yes, uh, absolutely. You know, the market moves yesterday were in line with the global peers posting a record close on the US Fed commentary. We had FII's net buying over 3,500 odd crores, DII's net buying over 550 odd crores. Central bank action continues today. So Bank of England, ECB both kept their rates unchanged after the Fed did. But uh, for example, the ECB did not indicate any kind of uh, expectations in terms of rate cuts. Uh, the U.S. markets are supportive, so they've closed higher. The strong retail data in the month of November is giving hopes of a soft landing in the U.S. It was up 0.3% month-on-month. Europe ended higher after the ECB kept their rates unchanged. 
Asia mostly in the green. Brent crude is the only probably a little bit of a niggling worry. It's at around $76 per barrel, headed for a weekly gain after two odd months. Gift Nifty, however, unperturbed and indicating a positive start, probably another record high for our markets in terms of an opening. Remember, yesterday, 19 Nifty stocks hit fresh 52-week highs, multi-year highs, and uh, experts say that 21,000 has now become an important support level for the Nifty. So yes, momentum is likely to continue supported by global queues today. Okay, all right, take that point. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Ekta. Now over to Vivek. He has a long list of stocks for us. Morning, Vivek. Well, good morning. You know, quite a few important news developments post market as yesterday. First on our list is Hero Motor Corp. You know, the company has informed the exchanges that they are looking to buy an additional stake in Ather Energy for up to 140 crore. Post this particular deal, you know, the company's stake in Ather Energy will increase to 39.7% from the current 36.6%. Additionally, the company has gone ahead and appointed Vivek Anand as the CFO effective March 1st, 2024. The second stock on our radar is M&M Financial Services. Rajesh Vasudevan has resigned as the chief compliance officer of the company with effect from Jan 13, 2024. Additionally, very interesting foray by the company. The company has informed the exchanges that it is looking to foray into the areas of life, health and general insurance. However, remember that this particular foray of the company is subject to regulatory approvals. A uh, couple of stocks, you know, interesting uh, block deals as well as fundraising plans. Saturn Credit Card is the first stock on our radar. The company has launched the QIP to raise up to 250 crores. The floor price for this particular QIP is close to 242.8 rupees a share. Two large block deals expected today. First stock on our radar, PVR and Ox. So, sources indicate that the plenty private group as well as multiple private equity partners are looking to sell up to 2.33% stake in the company. Offer price, you know, at the lower end of the price band is 1,750 rupees a share and the offer size is over 400 crores. The second stock on our radar, large block deal here as well, KFIN Technology. General Atlantic is looking to sell as high as 10% stake in the company. Uh, the base size of the deal is 6.2%. The remainder of the upside option block deal size is close to 514 crore and remember general atlantic held over 48 percent stake at the end of the september quarter okay all right so those are some block deal alerts thank you so much as always vivek uh, for getting us up to speed with that one Finally, let me go across to Nigel. He's joining in with all the cues from the FNO space. Hey, Nigel. Well, morning, Sonal. You know, yesterday we had a terrific Thursday. Let's see whether or not we get a fantastic Friday and the, you know, the indications coming in from the implied opening on the Nifty, they suggest so. But yesterday was as good a session as any. The Nifty, we started off in the green with a gain of around 180, 190 points odd, but we ended at the high point of the day. And it was a bit of a trend day because the intraday chart tells you that we didn't get any big dip during this session. And one positive was that both the pillars of the market performed. Whether you're looking at the Nifty Banking names, well, they in fact move higher. And the IT names as well did do well. And both, when both the pillars perform, obviously it spells good times for the markets. What did the FIs do? Well, after a while, they added more shots than long. So they added close to 5,000 short contracts. The short position, those added on 43%. And at least that long position is not going into the bubble terrain. You know, you don't want that number to go to around 100,000 contracts odd. It went to around 50,000 contracts odd, but with some short addition, uh, you know, that's why we're still holding around that 30 to 40,000 uh, contracts on the long side, which is par for the course, I would say. In an uptrending market, you want to highlight the put writing. And that's precisely what happened yesterday. The 21,100 put, the 21,200 put. Between them, they added close to around 80 lakh shares. So aggressive writing is what we saw out there. And now it's a blue, blue sky scenario. Anything can happen, right? So a bit of a punt some traders are taking out there. Going ahead, buying the 21,800 call, buying the 22,000 call. If you make money, you'll make big money. Just putting in 5, 10, 20 rupees also. It seems that is a bit of a punt in terms of the call uh, buying. But on the put side, since we're seeing writing, I'll give you the levels out there. The 21,050, that becomes a crucial support zone. And the 21,115, going by the options data, that's the crucial uh, support zone that uh, I'm looking at. Well, the Nifty has been doing well, but the reason that the Nifty has been doing even better in this month is because the Nifty Bank has come to the party. So if you just pull up that chart year to date of the Nifty as well as the Nifty Bank, you'll see the Nifty Bank just in the last one month or so, well, that one, in fact, has come to the party. And that's why with the Nifty Bank now wanting to catch up with what the Nifty has done, that's the additional kicker for the markets. In the month of December, in fact, you have the Nifty Bank that's been a relative outperformer. So trail your stop losses and continue to remain net long. This market appears it wants to test higher levels. Back to you. 
Okay, all right. Friday is always fantastic. Markets are higher or not. But thank you so much, guys, for joining us and prepping us up for this trading day ahead. With that, we'll do one thing. We'll sip into a break. Up next, we'll get you all the cues from the commodities market. Stay tuned for that. CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. Welcome back. Well, we've spoken about global markets and Indian markets as well. It's time to talk all about commodities now. Manisha Gupta is joining us as always. Manisha, looking good for the equity markets. What is it about uh, commodity today? Oh, looking good for the commodity markets as well, especially with the U.S. dollar trading at a four-month low. That is all you need, really. And the crude oil prices are headed for a first weekly gain in two months. There also are monthly reports that have come in from OPEC and EIA, and both of them are talking about world consumption rising in 2024. Of course, EIA has a lower target of 1.1 million, while OPEC talks about almost double at 2.25 million barrels. But the positive is that they are both looking at stronger consumptions going forward. In the other markets, you also are looking at metal prices headed for a strong week. So whether it's platinum, copper, gold and silver are trading at a one-week highs, and even zinc and aluminum are off their lows. So most of these industrial commodities headed for a strong week. Okay, strong week for the commodity space as well. Thank you so much, Manisha, for joining us. Well, move on and uh, get you some updates on the national front. Chief Minister-elect and first-time MLA Bhajan Lal Sharma will be sworn in today as the Chief Minister of Rajasthan. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Minister Amit Shah are also likely to be in attendance. Deputy Chief Ministers uh, Dia Kumari and Prem Chand Berwa will also be taking oath today. Okay, uh, with that, let's quickly do one thing. Take a look at what the Asian markets are doing. They continue to be higher. The Hang Seng is the one which is outperforming today with gains of almost 2%. Nikkei, which was down yesterday, has actually picked up. So that one is sitting with gains of 1.2%. Taiwanese index also doing well. And the Gift Nifty is indicating that the start for our own markets could be very strong. Another strong day for Indian markets is what we are expecting. With that, it's curtains down on this edition of Power Breakfast. But do stay tuned. All the morning action on Bazaar up, up next. CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence.